Welcome back everyone. I'm Jason Jensen. In today's episode, we are back working on the sci-fi diorama. You can see how large it is. Um, I have been working weeks and weeks on this. Uh, but I have a very exciting episode for you today because we are covering so many different techniques. We are going to be making brick out of styrofoam and painting it to look real. Uh, we're going to be rusting some metal up here. We're going to be adding water and mud into this area down here. Um, we're going to be using new weathering products by ammo which I am so excited about. And then we're actually going to talk a little bit about um, doing some electrical work and lighting this area down here. Very simple, very easy. All right, well, we have a lot to cover, so let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make some brick. Now, they have to be pretty small for this scale, but we're making them 3 8 long and 2 16 tall. That's the face of the brick. Again, it's 3 8 long and 2 16 tall. And this is how thick they're going to be. I've cut this. Uh, I was able to get three slices out of half inch piece or however thick it is uh, by just running it through my hot wire proxon cutter. To add some texture to the brick, I just took a piece of tin foil, made a ball out of it, and then what I'll do is I'll roll that over the entire piece. Let me show you. I'll do that to all these pieces. Then what I'll do is I'll adjust this and I'll run this through. So I'll adjust the fence to the wire and put two sixteenths in between there. And then just run these through and then I'll have all these little strips and I'll cut it three-eighths of an inch long for each tiny little brick and uh, and then we'll start to uh, build our wall so I cut exactly 1,000 <laughs> tiny bricks and now I just have to glue them all on and uh, I'm using liquid nails So I put enough on there for maybe four rows, maybe five. Just want to make sure that you put the uh, texture side facing out. Because if you remember, we took the uh, ball of tin foil and rolled it over the one side to texture it. Well, I only did, I probably should have done both sides uh, that way I wouldn't have to double check every piece yeah I'll show you up close so where we're at so far on this Okay, so the brickwork is done. This is all that's left of the uh, thousand bricks that I made. I'm 
this section fits into it like that. Okay, so next we're gonna paint our wall. I'm starting with French wine. It's just a, a dark red. Any dark red would work. Oh, because we're gonna put it, we're gonna sponge colors over the top of it. This is just a base coat. So I thinned it and I'm just gonna brush it on, making sure that I'm getting it in all the cracks. And you can see I masked off the uh, top and the bottom because we're gonna paint that to look like concrete. Okay, now we're moving on to raw sienna. Okay, now we're gonna use tangerine. And I know it's a bright, a very bright orange, uh, but that's okay. We're gonna to tone down the entire wall after we're done. We're going to put a wash over it. So we're going to do the least amount of this. Okay, next I want to paint some individual bricks. And I'm going to use bittersweet chocolate. Okay, now we're going to do a wash over the entire wall. And I'm using a, a dark gray. It's a bluish gray. It's called zinc. Okay, sorry, I had to go get some clean water. That water was red. <laughs> okay, I think I'm going to add deep midnight blue. <laughs> this is all kind of just experiment. Okay, I'm liking that gray. Now we'll add a very small dot of black to it. Okay, so I'm going to add more black to this mix. Okay, I don't know if you can see the difference. It will let this dry good and then uh, we'll see what it looks like and see if we need to add anything more to it before we put our mortar in. Okay, I took the tape off and we're gonna paint the uh, concrete while the uh, bricks are uh, drying. And we're using our chalk paint and it is called Cocoon. Okay, I'll get all this painted and then we'll come back and put a wash over it. So after that paint, the chalk paint dried, the cocoon, I put the same wash that I did over the walls over that. Okay, I'm gonna have to let all of this dry overnight. Um, I don't want to risk it being damp at all um, when I go to put all of the uh, gray mortar in. Okay, while we're waiting for our uh, brick wall to dry, uh, let's have some fun and add some rust. We're going to start with raw sienna. I have no idea what these things are, but <laughs> that's the fun of doing sci-fi modeling or make-believe modeling uh, you can just make it anything you want it doesn't have to be real so we're going to work light to dark
Okay, so that color is all done. Um, now we're going to switch to burnt sienna. And it's a little bit more red. So we're going to kind of hit the same areas. And we're definitely going to do less of this color. And really trying to focus on the edges of things. Because I think that's how rust would naturally, or where rust would naturally form. Okay, so that color is all completed. And you can see I'm going, uh, I'm putting the paint thick on the sponge. That way, when I dab it on there, it's actually leaving a texture. So I did all the pipes too. Okay, so now we'll switch to bittersweet chocolate. Um, I first, let's add some pastel chalks to this. Okay, so we've got our pastel chalk. We're not gonna do too much, just a little bit. Then we'll switch to our last color, bittersweet chocolate. Okay, again, we're using bittersweet chocolate. Any dark brown would work. Very little. And we're just going around the edges of things. Then I'm even going to go in with a small brush and do some detail. I'll show you in a second. Definitely going heavier towards the bottom. Then we'll take a small paintbrush. And you can definitely go thicker with this. So we're just hitting the edges. Okay, we've finished with the uh, bittersweet chocolate. And now I'm using an orange colored, or a, sort of a terracotta color pastel chalk. You can see I'm just scraping it with the brush, letting that powder fall right over. I'm going along the bottom of these. Now this kind of ruined your brush, but if you just use this brush for pastels only, it's fine. Okay, it's time to mix up some mortar. So I'm just using regular joint compound. Uh, there's just a teeny bit of water in there. And I got a piece of cardboard. Now I'd rather mix too much than not enough. I really don't know how much I'm gonna need, but. Okay, that's probably good. Now, so I'm using dark gray, zinc. I'm gonna add a little bit more black, darken it up. Now I'm just adding some water, some of my dirty brush water. Okay, it's hard to explain how thin it is, but... That's about the thickness. Um, there's no real science to it. 
Okay, now the scary part. We <laughs> put some on there. Okay, I might, you know, I think I'm actually just going to use my finger. Now I did get some stiff brushes. And they're stiff, uh, they're just stiff haired brushes. Now I'm just dipping it into my water. Well, you can start to see. So I thought I would show you some more progress. This does take a while. It's starting to thicken up a little bit. Um, but it could be a little bit thicker. <laughs> I know this is probably pretty scary for some. It's kind of scary for me. <laughs> you just have to uh, concentrate, keep working. I don't know if you can see. I should zoom out a little bit. So first, you just want to wipe as much as you can off with the paper towel. Then, this is why you have to make sure that everything is completely dry because this gets pretty wet. This is kind of a big section that I did here, but that's okay. You can see like half the wall is done and the other top half is not done yet. Well, the bottom half's not completely done either, but you can see it's starting to come off. Now I'm going to take a smaller brush, using my water again, and I'm going to start from the bottom and sort of do the whole process over again as far as cleaning it. So you can see I'm only doing about two or three rows at a time. Okay, so here is what our wall is looking like so far. Okay, next we're going to make a metal door to go on our brick wall. And the first thing I did was make a uh, paper pattern. I'm now using it for my glue palette. I cut the shape out. And then I cut some strips. And glued them on there. I went a little thicker at the bottom. I think the strips on the sides and in the middle are a quarter of an inch and then this is a half inch at the bottom. I then took a round piece of plastic and cut all the little rivets and glued them on. And again I used my template for my door and I actually put, I'll darken them up so you can see them. I put lines on there so it gave me a guide so I knew exactly where to put them. Then I used um, Elmer's glue and brushed some on. And then while it's wet, I took baking soda and sprinkled it on. This will give us texture for our rust when we get to that point. Then you just want to shake it off. I'm going to shake this off over my trash can. Okay, next we'll spray paint it our uh, aqua color, our teal blue color. 
and then we'll come back and put some rust on it. Okay, so I've painted the door. Okay, let's add some rust. So what I have here is bittersweet chocolate, burnt sienna, raw sienna, and antique gold. And we're just using a sponge. Uh, this is a grout sponge that you can buy at any hardware store. Sorry, my mat's kind of a mess. I need to, uh, after this project, I'll soak it in hot, soapy water and get it all cleaned up for the next project. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, I'm going heavier towards the bottom of the door. Uh, burnt sienna. Um, first... There's some areas that I wanted to hit with my brush with the bittersweet chocolate. So now I'm starting to pick up some of that texture that we added with the baking soda. I just put some water on my brush just to make this a little bit more of a wash. It's I'm really, really happy with how it's turning out. Now you don't have to do it in this order. You can work light to dark. I just so happen to be working dark to light. Um, I don't know why, I just, I just am this time. Sometimes I do the opposite though. Now we'll do a little bit of this antique gold. I may want to mix it. Okay, so I just sponged on very little of the gunmetal gray. It's a metallic. Okay, so I just mixed up, uh, let's see, desert turquoise, baby blue, and sea breeze and just simply very lightly very light just putting some little highlights so as you can see i'm sticking to sort of the edges in the middle here and then right in the center of the two panels Okay, our door is finished. Okay, so here's a quick view of where we're at so far. Uh, this half, everything is just sitting in there. Okay, so at this point, I thought that I was close to being finished. And I'd been taking pictures and sending them to my friend, James Powell, who lives in California. And he liked the work, but he said, man, if you really want to take it to the next level and really make it look realistic, you need to be using weathering products from ammo. So... I have a lot of respect for James and his modeling skills. So without hesitation, I just started using some ammo product. And man, was he right. It completely took it to the next level. Um, I am just so impressed with uh, what you can do with their product. Let's take a look.
Okay, next we're going to texture all this. Now, my original plan was to pour resin in here and make this look like it was kind of deep. But now I've decided against that and I'm going to have this be the bottom. So I'm going to make all mud and dirt and sludge in here and have some puddles. So the first thing what we're going to do is put down where our actual puddle or water is going, going to be. And uh, to cover up the texture of the wood, I'm going to use joint compound. Now I'm just using water and I'm going to smooth this out. The water is a little dirty from my uh, brushes, but that's okay. It's all going to get painted. Just kind of smoothing it out a little bit. Okay, now we're going to add real dirt. We're going to smear it around. So I'm just kind of putting it around the edges and anywhere where I see the texture of the wood. Okay, next I'm going to spray it down with alcohol. Now, I'm going to use half water, half glue. Okay, so I've just been taking the paper towel and going over the dirt areas. Just to soak up some of the extra water. Just the dirt areas. Don't go over the areas with the plaster. Okay, now we're going to add some junk in this. Okay, it's all textured the way that I want it. Now we just have to let this sit. It'll probably take at least 24 hours, if not longer, to completely dry. And then we'll just come back in and paint it to look muddy and grimy. Uh, it'll all be done with weathering techniques. Okay, so I've mixed up a green color. And it's just uh, a dark green, brown, and some black. And let's see how this is going to look. Okay, now I've made a dark brown wash. We're going to try to blend this together. Okay, so I'm using a bunch of different, different washes. And they're just acrylic with water. So I've got brown, a brownish green, a black. And we're just putting some value on it. I'm doing this while it's wet so that the colors bleed together. Okay, so I mixed a little bit of yellow ochre. You can see it here. I just dipped it into my dirty green wash. Now we're just adding a little bit more value to it. If anything's too intense when it dries, we can do a wash over it to tone it down. Well, it's really starting to dry. Now I have to go in and add rust to all those little metal pieces that we put in there. And then we'll pour a layer of polyurethane over the entire thing and it will make it look like it is completely wet. Okay, let's play around with some washes. We're going to use black wash and you can see I've already put some streaking on there with um, some engine oil and rust effects and I'll show you in a second how I did those now I am going to move these these aren't glued in place <laughs> obviously all right and I'm using a very thin, fine brush. 
And the first thing we're doing is just sort of getting this area a little wet with the uh, odorless thinner. So we're just getting the areas wet where we want that black wash to go. That way it'll flow very easily. Okay, so I'm just dipping the end of my brush into the black wash. Sorry, this is a little awkward for me because I'm I want you to be able to see it really well. So I've got it situated a little bit weird, but that's okay. We're gonna make it work. So you can see with the black wash, I'm just it's kind of sloppy almost. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say sloppy, but I'm just not being real concerned about where it's going because next we'll clean it up. Okay, so I'm cleaning that brush. You can't see it, but I actually have two thinners. One jar is very dirty and uh, the other jar is clean thinner. So first I'm rinsing it in the um, dirty one. Now, taking the clean thinner, and we can shape this. Now you want to go on both sides of where you put the uh, black wash. This softens the edge so that you don't get a hard, a hard line. So in the past, I've tried to do this with acrylics and I water down acrylic and you always get a hard edge when it dries, always. Well, this is an enamel paint and by using the thinner, it softens the edge. So you can see it doesn't take much. This black wash will last me a very long time. Now again, I'm cleaning my brush with the dirty thinner, then dipping it into the clean thinner and going on both sides of where we put that wash. Now the scary part is it looks fat. Uh, that alcohol on there is making the whole area look wet. But when that evaporates and completely dries, you'll get a nice thin line that has a soft edge to it. Now I am definitely no expert. I am just learning myself how to use these. So I'm sure the more I use them, the better I'll get. And I plan on practicing a lot with these and getting really, really good at using them. I'm just so impressed with how realistic you can get things to look with these. Now again, this area that I'm working on right now, it looks like that's really wide, but when that dries, there should be a thin line with a soft edge. Hopefully you can see on the areas that are starting to dry that you're getting that really nice streak. So really the entire key to this is using the thinner. Okay, so you can see I put a little bit of that black wash on there. And now I just put a bunch of thinner on there. And I'm just letting it run down. It looks extreme now, but when that thinner starts to evaporate, it'll fade from a dark to a light. Okay, well that's enough on the black wash. Now let's try some rust effects. So this is streaking rust. So you can see it's kind of extreme when you first put it on. We'll 
clean the brush, get some clean thinner, we'll soften those edges. When this all dries, I'll take the camera off and show you up close. Right now I have a, a lamp right next to it to light it um, so that you can really see what I'm doing. Um, let me turn it off for a second. There you can start to see the effect a little better. Okay, so put a bunch, a bunch of thinner in this. I am using the dirty thinner. Okay, and then we'll put a little bit of the rust effects in it. So I dipped my brush, I don't know what that was, like four or five times in the thinner and just once in the uh, rust effects. So I have a very, very thin wash. That wash that we've just made really really tints it so we're not covering up what we've already done we're putting a wash over it which tints it and allows that work that we did below it to show through okay so I'm using Slimy Grime Light and Thinner. And it's probably a 60-40 mix, 60% uh, thinner. Now you can see that it's making everything dark. And I think that's the scariest thing for people is that it's hard to picture what it's going to look like after it all dries and evaporates but it just takes practice uh, this is not going to just you're not just going to dip your brush into the jar brush it on there and magically have it look awesome uh, you definitely have to work with it. So as you can see, I'm just putting it in the cracks and letting it run down. Now it's okay. It, it's bleeding out into the styrofoam. And um, it's okay. That will all evaporate. And the only thing you'll see is the green. And like always, you want to look at photos. Uh... Do a Google search and see what it really looks like in real life. You want to always use uh, reference photos so that you're not just guessing. It's going to help make it look more realistic. Okay, well, as you can see, as I keep saying over and over, it's dark, but that will evaporate that thinner will evaporate and it'll just leave the slimy grime showing and that's that's the key to using these products there are a lot of videos on using these products on um, YouTube so you might want to go look at some of those too because like I said, I'm new to this, but I'm going to keep doing it. Um, I'm sure almost every video I will be playing around with these products. So, if you follow along on my channel, you'll be able to watch and see how I progress with these and learn to use them. Now you can just use clear thinner I'm just cleaning my brush and getting the clear thinner and you can go along the edge of what you just did and soften it again it's scary because it looks like you're making it 
fatter than what you want it to be or covering more of an area that, that you want and you're like oh I'm making it too big but this will evaporate and you'll just see that green around the edge and it's great because these are enamels you have some time to work with them it's not like acrylics where they dry super fast and then it's done. <laughs> uh, these you have a little bit of time to manipulate them and move them around a little bit and, and soften the edges. All right, I'll show you this after this dries. Because uh, as you can see, it's kind of dark right now, which tells us that it's all still damp uh, from the thinner. So we'll come back in a little bit and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so as you can see, it's all dry. And let me give you a closer look. So this is using the light slimy green that I showed you and uh, wet effects. And here's a good example of the wet effects. Look at the concrete right here. You can see it looks pretty dry. The same concrete with wet effects brushed on it. It just looks damp and wet. So here I used a uh, light rust wash and in this area I've been using a lot of engine oil. I think that it's really, really bringing the whole thing more to life, adding lots of realism to it. So I've been adding pigments. Um, they're just like a, a pastel chalk powder. Um, they're better. <laughs> they're better than pastels. Um, and I've been brushing it on, getting a, a dirty look. Now, I really want people to go back and watch the video part two of building this diorama because you'll see how clean this entire area looked. And at the time, I thought that it looked great. I was happy with it. But now, after using the pigments to dirty it up and add shadows, uh, I really went dark back in corners. Um, I, I just love how it's really bringing it to life. Now, I want this to look damp in certain areas on the floor. So, I'm going to use wet effects. And hopefully, I can do this and you can see it so that I'm... Uh, not in the way. Maybe I need to move the camera. We'll do a little area and see. Man, I really hope you can see this. Uh, it's very exciting. It really looks like it's just damp in this area. It's not like it, there's water puddles standing there, but it makes the concrete look 
damp. Okay, just made a quick trip to Home Depot and bought two different sizes of screen. Um, this one here, we're going to make some railings out of. Well, as you can see, I am making some railings for the catwalk out of the uh, wire mesh that I got from Home Depot. Um, again, I apologize for how messy my workbench is. Uh, after this large diorama is finished, I'm going to completely clean my workshop, scrub everything down, and start on the next project. Okay, so I've been busy over at the workbench creating uh, the roof for this. The first thing I used was mat board and it's just for putting around pictures. You can buy it at any craft store. I painted it to look like metal panels. This one gets covered so I'm not too worried about that. I left a space in the back because eventually wires will have to come up um, to put lights on the ceiling that gets put on this. So right now I'm just putting everything in place just to see what it's going to look like. Now this is the uh, inside of a DVD player. So that's the tray that comes out that you put the disc in and goes back in and then this was next to it and it controls all the uh, electronics so and then the top is the uh, cap off of a monster energy drink and all of this has been weathered with product from ammo okay so that goes right there it's a good fit Then I've got two bottle caps off of a Pepsi bottle. And we'll put those right there. This is just another spare part that I had in my scrap box. This is off of a Nerf gun. And then I rusted up a couple pipes. Now these I really rusted. I wanted them to look really old and corroded and dirty. Uh, the last thing I have is wire. The wire um, from Home Depot. I cut it and made a little fence. Okay, here is our catwalk. I still need to add a bit more rust, I think, on the railings and maybe dirty up the, the top of this a little bit. Uh, but let's put it in place and see what it looks like. All right, I think that looks great. And again, a big thanks to my friend Doug who laser cut that catwalk out of wood for me. So the lighting is super easy. I just bought this kit 
on uh, Amazon. Comes with a remote. You can change the color, the brightness. You can have it rotate between all the colors uh, there's a lot that you can do with this it's just fun uh it's good enough for me i'm not a big electrical person and uh, i'm not too concerned about the lighting um it's just a fun feature I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I am having so much fun working on this. Uh, I'm not done. Uh, there's still things I'd like to add, lots of details, maybe some barrels, uh, drums, um, signs, caution signs that say maybe biohazard or caution, radioactive. Um, and I'd still like to make a lid that goes on this. Maybe come up about uh, an inch, inch and a half, and have it hinged on the back so that the whole lid can raise up and down. And then I'll put pipes all underneath it. And then wires hanging down and chains hanging down. And then lights. I'll connect to the lights that are in here. Come up in the corner here. And probably do a loop. So light shines down on it. Uh, it'll be great for photography. And I'll use this to photograph action figures and uh, miniatures. Um, uh, any different toys or figures that I have. Um, so it's just so fun to have an, another scale model to be working on. Uh, so I don't get burned out. Um, now, I've been working on this since July 8th, and today is September 15th. And so, uh, I'm going to take a little break from this, go back to model railroading, and work on some new projects there, and then come back and wrap this up. And don't worry, I have more dioramas planned for the future. Um, uh, Probably the next diorama will be one with um, spaceships. Uh, it'll be a landing, uh, different level landing pads uh, for refueling. Um, so I am excited about that. Uh, but like I said, I'll take a little break, get back to model railroading, and then uh, come back and wrap this up. All right, well, we covered so much today. And don't forget to visit Ammo. So um, I'll put the web address on the screen and also in a link in the description below. Look into possibly the uh, Proxon hot wire cutter. Um, a very useful tool if you're going to be cutting a lot of styrofoam. It just makes it so much easier than cutting it by hand. All right, well... Thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. Uh, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel. Be sure to click on that bell up in the corner to be notified when I upload new videos. And until next time, stay motivated and happy modeling, everyone.